Good evening, everyone. My name is Joy Moten Thomas. I serve as the Assistant Extension Administrator for the Cooperative Extension Program. And I wanna welcome you to our second Farm Service Agency webinar. We will be featuring tonight the Agriculture Risk Coverage and Price Loss Coverage Program, typically referred to as ARC PLC, for those of you who wanna get into the acronym. Um, we, this evening, I am delighted to have back again, Neil Leonard, who will be our presenter for tonight. I just wanna do a short note to let folks know that we were able to make this opportunity available based on funding that Fort Valley State University Cooperative Extension Program received from the National Office of Farm Service Agency. And every Tuesday this month, we are going to be spotlighting at least two of the Farm Service Agency's flagship programs with the ultimate goal of increasing the visibility of the Farm Service programs and hopefully helping you connect to programs that can benefit your farm operation here in the state of Georgia. Next, next Tuesday's webinar, which will be featuring the Livestock Forage Disaster Program and the Non-Insured Crop Disaster Assistance Program. All of our presentations are recorded and they are posted to the Fort Valley State University Cooperative Extension Program's YouTube page. We have a Q&A section and we have a chat box. At any point in time during Mr. Leonard's presentation, you would like to ask a question, please feel free to post your question in either the Q&A section or in the chat box located at the bottom of your screen. So without any further ado, I would like to turn the floor over to Mr. Neil Leonard to talk about the agriculture risk coverage and price, ooh, I cannot speak, price loss coverage program. Neil, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Joy. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, again, um, for bringing us back on this week. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, again, my name is Neil Leonard. I'm the outreach coordinator for the Georgia FSA State Office. Uh, I bring you greetings from Arthur Tripp, our state executive director uh, for the Georgia FSA State Office. And tonight we're going to be talking about, uh, as Ms. Joy said, the agricultural risk coverage and price loss coverage programs. Um, this particular program, I will say, uh, for starters, uh, was in the 2014 Farm Bill and in the 2018 Farm Bill that we are currently in uh, as of right now. So, uh, and I will go on and say, as far as uh, the base and what this particular program covers uh, are basically for row croppers. Uh, that have crop acreage base. And crop acreage base really came from planted acres of row crops, certain row crops. In a minute, I'll show a screen um, that lists the uh, eligible commodities and they are basically row crops. And the reason why I wanna bring that up is because actually this, a program has been in existence uh, since I've been working with the agency, and I've been with the agency 30 years, the name might have been a little different, and some of the policies and the procedures might have been a little different, but we have dealt with crop acreage base for a number of years now. Uh, the title of the program very well might have been different, uh, but to bring you up to speed, our PLC program has been around in the 14 farm, farm bill and is currently in the 18 farm bill. Okay, um, Joy, did you see the next slide? The yes, sir, I do. 
Okay, the Agriculture Risk Coverage Price Loss Coverage, PLC. Program goals, these key U.S. Department of Agriculture safety net programs help producers weather fluctuations in either revenue or price for certain crops. Then if we have here the enrollment deadline is March 15th, which is actually next week. So uh, it's good to talk about this particular program at this particular time. Um, and it says enrollment deadline. Uh, two things I wanna go ahead and mention about the sign up for our PLC. Uh, we have enrollment and then we have election um, sign up dates. And even during this particular time, you can, uh, during this enrollment deadline, you can also do an election. Let me explain the difference between the two. Uh, when it talks about election, it's for every base acre crop that you have on your farm, if you have it. And I talk about that uh, in a few minutes. Uh, you have to enroll each of your crop acreage base in either R or PLC. So you have to decide if you got wheat base, if you got corn base, um, soybean base, you have to elect for each of those bases uh, where you want to have for those bases, whether it's going to be ARC or PLC. When it comes about enrollment, we're talking about payment. Just want to make it simple. Keep it sort of on as simple as possible. Uh, enrollment is for you being eligible to receive payments if a year from now the prices are where uh, things are triggered for you to be able to receive payment on any of those base acres. So election is when you are looking at saying, hey, look, I'm gonna do this for my wheat base. I'm gonna do this for my corn base. I'm gonna do this for my peanut base. I'm gonna do this for my cotton base. That's election. Enrollment is when you sign the contract. And basically, let me say this in simple, the shares uh, that you have on that particular crop acreage base. So from year to year, the shares of a particular crop that you may have on a farm may differ. So you need to come in and sign a contract saying, hey, look, here's my shares, here's the contract. So if payments become available next year, then uh, you can, you know, receive those payments. So that's what enrollment is for. Enrollment is for you to get paid when that time comes. If the price has dropped to a certain level and then uh, payments are triggered and then you can receive payment. So that's, that's what's really important. Uh, so election is to determine which program, whether it's ARC or PLC, for which you wanna enroll your crop acreage base. And then uh, for payment, it's for, uh, that's enrollment. So election of base, that's for the election. And then for enrollment, it's for you to, to, to get a payment, so. Uh, and let me say, uh, even for beginning farmers, and when I look at ARC PLC, for the most part, people that are farming and that are familiar with uh, ARC PLC, if they got crop acreage base, more than likely they should be familiar with this particular program. But for any case, uh, a new producer may come in and they may inherit some land. They may even purchase some land that might have crop acreage base. And if you're not aware 
if you have crop acreage base or not, go into your local county office where your farm is located and ask for a FSA 156. And that particular form would let you know if you have crop acreage base on your farm. And it'll let you know which crop acreage base is eligible and which one is not eligible. So uh, simply being said, you know, if you're a farmer and if you're not, and you are on, on farm land, uh, and if you are not sure if the farm have crop acres or base or not, ask for FSA 156 on the farm, and then it'll tell you if you have uh, crop acreage base or not, and for, for which crops as well. So uh, for starters, you know, if you aren't sure, you can at least do that. Go in and, and inquire that, and then you can see about enrolling the farm uh, in the ARC PLC program. And just want to make mention, uh, let me go ahead to the next screen, the ARC and PLC commodities. Now, as you can see, there are a number of crops that's listed, but the highlighted in the dark print are for Georgia. So for Georgia commodities, wheat, oats, sea cotton, barley, corn, grain, sorghum, soybeans, peanuts, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, those are the Georgia crops that are eligible for the ARC PLC program. So um, be mindful of that. So if you go in and get a 156 EZ, um, if you have base for these particular crops, then you can enroll those crop acres base. Now, that's one of the things I go ahead and mention. Now, I'm going to talk about it a little more as we go down through the slides. Is that at some point in time on that form, that form had history of planted acres on that particular form. And because of those planted acres, it created crop acreage base. Okay, and so it is the base that is actually being enrolled in ARC PLC, not the actual crop. Because actually, as of now, if you can have wheat base, corn base, soybean base, and not even plant those crops for 2000, say for this year, for 2020, 2022. You can have base on those crops, but you may not decide to plant those crops. So you don't actually have to have that crop planted in order to receive payment on that particular crop. I just want to mention that you are actually enrolling the crop acreage base. But at some point in time, in history time, that particular crop was planted on the farm and because of the planting history, it created a base. And through the different programs and through the farm bill with policies and procedures have gotten to a place where uh, crop acreage base is no more calculated. It really doesn't determine uh, if you plant the crop or not because uh, crop acreage has been froze the base has been frozen uh, at this stage. So you, you can't even build any more base. So whatever base you have now, that's what you enroll. So hopefully that wasn't too wordy, but they're trying again, trying to keep things as simple as possible. You are enrolling the base, not the crop. So you can actually receive payment uh, 
own a crop acreage base and not even have that particular crop planted for that year. Neil. Yes. I have a question that has come up. Okay. Even though dry peas are not highlighted in bold, I have a, there's a question of what kind of dry peas? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. That's a good question. Um, all of these crops that's listed, uh, you know, that's nationwide. But uh, here in Georgia, that's not considered a eligible commodity. But I will say, Joy, uh, contact whatever county. I don't know if that question came from someone who's here in Peach County. Uh, no, it came from Bullock County. Bullock County. I will say to them to reach out to the uh, Bullock County office and see if, uh, you know, if dry peas of what the history. Again, let me go back to mentioning that 156. If they aren't sure, that 156 would tell you what crops are eligible and those that aren't eligible. That is a good question. But now, as far as I know of right now, dry peas are not listed for Georgia. But that's a good question. Uh, reach out to your local county office. Uh, ask them about the 156. And that'll let you know what crops are eligible on your farm. Thank you, Neil. Mm -hmm. The Ark County. I'm going to read this, uh, Joy. It says, Ark County program payments are targeted when the actual county crop revenue of a covered commodity is less than the Ark County guarantee for the crop. The actual county revenue and the revenue guarantee are based on county level yield data for the physical location of the base acres on the farm and track. Let me, I wanted to mention this a little earlier. This particular program is considered a safety net program. Uh, with FSA and the webinars that we're having now talking about our different programs, uh, we're going to talk about disaster programs, we're going to talk about conservation programs, uh, we're going to talk about safety net programs, we're going to talk about price support programs. And this particular program, ARC PLC, is considered a safety net program. And a number of years ago when I first came on board, and as they explained to me about what safety net meant was basically, and, and, I've, and it has stuck with me through the years, in that once price for a particular crop drops to a certain level, these particular programs are considered a safety net. And when the market price and everything drops to a certain level, these particular programs kick in and provide, and I say this I'm prayerfully, I'm using the right term, uh, it provides a subsidy. And so it provides a floor. And so uh, with the ARC County, you, you can have ARC County, then you can have ARC individual. Now, nationally speaking, with the ARC program, you can do individual or you can do county. For the most part here in Georgia, we don't have our individual, and that'll come up next. So I'm not going to even really dwell on that. But we do have our county. And when the price for a particular commodity that we just showed earlier for, uh, simply speaking, for wheat or corn or soybeans, once it dropped to a certain level and on the county average for the five year county average is what they look at. If it drops before below the guarantee for that county, that's when a possible payment will kick in. So again, this sort of simply saying when uh, a producer comes in and elect for their base, most cases uh, it's our county. 
And so for that particular county, when the five-year average level drops be below the guarantee, then you very well can possibly receive a payment. But let me go on and mention this. For payment-wise, if you enroll in now for 22 by the March 15 deadline, we don't know to 12 months later if a payment is going to be available for that particular base in that particular crop. So you, you really don't know. It's always a year later uh, before it's actually determined if a payment is available for that particular base, because then we would know if the five-year average drops below the county guarantee. Let me say this. For those farmers out there that may be multi-county farmers, and I'm here in Peach County, and I know the Peach County office covers uh, Houston County, uh, it covers Bibb County, and one or two other, I think Taylor and Crawford County. And so you very well have multi-county producers. And so uh, you can very well have uh, for a particular base, if you have crop acreage base in one county on one farm and then on another farm in another county, you know, and I know in time past, they say, hey, look, I was eligible in Houston, but hey, I wasn't eligible in Peach. And that's the case. You have to, you know, decide because it does differ uh, by county. So you could have one county, one farm in one county being eligible, then you may have another form in another county, and it may not be eligible. So um, most of the crop acres base here in Georgia is enrolled in the ARC County. And I'll go ahead and mention this, and I'm going to talk about this a little later, but I'll go on and mention it now. For the most part, I'm going to make this thing simple. For the most part here in Georgia, most crop acreage base is enrolled in Art County. And for peanuts and cotton, that's enrolled in the PLC program. That's just, I'm, I'm trying to make this thing simple, Joy. Uh, for the most part with Art and with PLC, uh, most most crop acres base is in Art County. When we look at what the five-year average would be one year later from enrolling uh, for your base, and then, then they'll determine, they'll be able to look back, okay, did the uh, price level drop below the guarantee? And if it dropped below the guarantee, then it could create a payment. And again, when it drops below the guarantee, as I mentioned, it's like a floor. So if the prices drop too low, then the government is saying, hey, look, we got to kick in this particular program and provide some subsidies and say, hey, look, we need to bring this level back up so you know that farmers can keep farming. So I, I, I'm going to sort of simply say it that way. For the most part, with Art County, we are looking at what the county average is for that particular crop. All right. The Art County payment is equal to 85% of the base acres for the covered commodity multiplied by the difference between the county guarantee and the actual county crop revenue for the covered commodity. Uh, with this particular side I, slide, I do want to mention is that it's the 85% of the base acres. So each farm for each crop acreage base, if that county level falls below that floor, then it very well may trigger a payment, but you're only going to get paid on 85% of the base that that farm has for that particular crop. All right. Individual 
uh, risk coverage. Again, uh, we have very little of this in Georgia. Uh, I did speak with the county as well as the state office staff. This is available, but we really just don't have this in Georgia. And that's when an individual uh, decides to say, hey, look, I'm not gonna go with the county. I'm gonna go with my individual yields uh, on my particular form and you look at the form totally as a whole and not individual. But we really don't have this in Georgia. Price loss coverage. The PLC program payments are issued when the effective price of a covered commodity is less than the respective effective price for that commodity. PLC payments are not dependent upon the planting of a covered commodity or planting of an applicable base crop on the farm. Let me say this, the difference between ARC PLC County. ARC PLC County, uh, again, I mentioned about what the price drops below a certain guarantee for that particular county. As I sort of mentioned, you may have a multi-county producer that may be eligible for this particular base. They may have wheat base in a farm in housing. They may have wheat base, a farm in peach. And it depends on that particular county. Peach may become eligible, Houston may not. That's by county. But now for price loss, the PLC, we're looking at a national price. And so for the most part here in Georgia, that's peanuts and cotton. And so uh, the difference is, uh, for the most part, with ARC, you're looking at county prices. But with PLC, you're looking at a national price. And for the most part, I'm not going to dive into it, uh, but for peanuts, most peanut farmers, for the most part, go on PLC. They already know uh, in advance uh, what the pricing is going to be for peanuts. So here in Georgia, for the most part, pe uh, peanuts and cotton go PLC. I just want to try to make things uh, as simple as possible. Again, PLC payments, if triggered, will be paid on 85% of the farm base acres for each covered commodity with a PLC election where the farm has been enrolled. Uh, I'm gonna step back. I mentioned here, it says PLC payments are not dependent upon the planting of a covered commodity or planting of the applicable base crop on the farm. That's with R as well as PLC. Again, you are enrolling the base, not the crop, not what's planted out there for this year. So again, going back to that 156 that I mentioned earlier when you first go in, It'll tell you if you have crop acreage base, you are enrolling the base, not what you're actually planting. So uh, the thing is, you don't, if you got wheat base, or going back to what I'm trying to keep it simple, if you got wheat base, corn base, peanut base, you don't actually have to have those crops planted on that farm for like for this year, for 22, you don't actually have to have that crop planted to be eligible for a payment on that particular crop if the payment is triggered because you enroll in the base, not planted acres. So uh, that's one thing I, I, I know you've heard me say a good bit of from the beginning is crop acres base. Now base came about because of the planting history of that crop in past years. 
uh, for different programs for different farm bills that we've had, but crop acreage base has been frozen. So since crop acreage base has been frozen, then you can still enroll that brace and not have to plant that crop. All right. Producers can elect coverage and enroll in crop by crop. ARC County or PLC, we got our individual, which we said we really don't have here in Georgia. Although election changes are optional, enrollment signed contract is required each year for the program. If an election is not submitted by the deadline March 15th, the election default to the current election for crops on the farm from the prior crop year. So uh, as far as election goes, uh, if when it comes to election, if the farm is not updated for this year, as far as election uh, for that base, then it's defaulted to what it was previously. But now again, that's for the base and whether or not, if it was Art County prior to you coming in with March 15th, and if you don't come in, then that's what it's gonna default to. But now again, if you wanna get paid, then that's in that's uh enrollment. So uh, I sort of explained that a little earlier. But now, if you don't uh, come in and make an election, then it's going to default to what it was previously. But now, if you don't come in and enroll, then you won't get no payment if a payment is triggered a year from now. There are some decision tools. Uh, that's available out there. Uh, I will go on and mention to you, uh, if you go on farmers.gov and you put in ARC PLC, it very well may take you to the FSA uh, public website, and you can go to those tools that will assist you in making your determination on uh, what's best for you and your farm. Uh, again, FSA is not to, to elect for you which program to enroll in. But I did mention to you for the most part and what has been shown here in Georgia when it comes to ARC PLC, that for the most part, most of the crops have been ARC County and peanuts and cotton has been PLC, so simply said. Uh, I wanna go ahead and mention this. On this particular side, a producer may not receive ARC or PLC payments if the sum of base acres on all farms in which the producer has an interest is 10 acres or less. If you have on a farm and the acres is less than 10 acres, you won't receive payment unless if you socially disadvantaged farmers or rancher, limited resource, or rancher, beginning farmer, rancher, or veteran farmers, then if you fall in any of these categories and you have base acreage that is less than 10 acres, then you could still enroll that base into ARC PLC. And the last slide I have here is uh, my contact information, which is, you know, again, I'm the state outreach coordinator. The number here is to the local county office. Uh, so I, here in the county office, we have the farm loan program side, and then we have the farm program side. So, uh, and I do have my email address here, but uh, feel free to reach out to me. But I will say to you, if you dial that number, you can talk to the program side or the farm loan side and, uh, and get those questions uh, answered uh, that you may have. Uh, let me go ahead and mention 
Uh, again, at this March 15th deadline coming up for ARC PLC, uh, the CRP general sign up ends March the 11th, uh, which I think is the end of this week uh, for the CRP general sign up. Uh, the CRP grassland is actually coming up starting in April. So uh, just be mindful. I'm pretty sure I'll be sending out some information on that. But uh, be mindful of those deadlines. Uh, today, we talked about the ARC PLC. Uh, this particular program, uh, you can really go into a lot of details. Uh, on this particular program. I will say once you get real deep into the details, it, it really depends on the farmer telling us what they want. But um, just try to make uh, things as simple as possible when it comes to ARC, when it comes to PLC and what has actually taken place here in Georgia when it came to uh, elections on those crops between ARC and PLC. For the most part, those other crop acreage base has been ARC County. And for PLC, that's been peanuts and cotton. Just simply say it. Uh, but now again, for each producer, for each farm, they have to tell us what they want to enroll in, but we can look at what has taken place here in Georgia and what farmers have elected for their base and, um, and then coming in uh, for enrollment to receive payment. But again, uh, the sign up for this program, for the crop year for this year, 22, uh, it's coming up March the 15th, but now you enroll in this program this year, but it's not until next year before we know if payment will be triggered for a particular crop or for a particular base uh, for that particular crop. So you enroll now, but it's not until next year before we know if payment is even gonna be available. Because again, we pro this is a safety net program. It provides a floor. So we won't know until next year um, if a payment is triggered. And this is the way this has been since I've known this program. Again, we've had different names for this particular program, but it's always been a year later to determine if a payment uh, was made for that particular crop acreage base. So, Joy, I'm going to turn it back over to you. I, I hope I was able to make it uh, sort of clear and simple uh, on the ARC PLC program. Well, I do have one question for you, Neil, and I don't know if, if I missed it, but okay. can I enroll in both ARC and PLC? You got to choose which one. Oh, so I cannot do both. Base. You got for for that base, you got to you got to decide which one you want. Okay. Is there any cost associated with applying to either one of these programs? No, no, I don't. That, that's a good question. Um, no, there's there's no cost. Do you check not, credit or anything like that? In order no, to no, enroll? not for not for this program. Mm -mm. What okay. you just need to know is to come in and get your 156 EZ on your farm. And that 156 will let you know if you have crop acreage base. Okay. If you don't have no base, there's no, there's no, no need to even look at this program. But you okay. got to have crop. But uh, enroll into it, there's no, there's no uh, application fee or anything like that. Uh, most times, Joy, I may be stepping out on saying this. Most people know if they got crop acreage base. They familiar with this particular program. Again, the ARC PLC program has been around in the 14 farm bill as well as the 18 farm bill that we have now. 
But there can be cases out there. Uh, there can be cases that a uh, producer may not be sure, may not know. They got crop acres base. And I will say crop acres base has been frozen. So you could have base that's been on a farm that you're not aware of. But there's no fee, there's no fee or anything like that to enroll this program. So you've mentioned two dates that I've heard from your presentation, Tuesday, March the 15th. And then I also heard you mention Friday, March the 11th. That's for the CRP. That, that's, oh, that's, that's the another, other program. That's, that's not the program. Okay. That, that was just a deadline. Okay. You know, I'll be, I think we got that on the schedule to talk about, but now that general sign up for CRP ends on the 11th. Okay, which is this Friday. Gotcha. That's right. mm -hmm. And so as long as I come into my local FSA office, I can get my questions answered on if I have base that qualifies for either ARC or PLC. That's right. Okay. That's right. They, they can come in. Yeah. If they aren't okay. sure, you know, and um, you can definitely ask them. And if you want something that you can take home with you, just say, hey, print me a 156 easy and let me look at it and that'll tell me what's on that phone. Okay. And that 156 easy is something that I would obtain from my local FSA office? That's right. On your phone. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, when it comes to that, you know, uh, don't really want to dive too deep into it, but now, you know, we're talking about where you're the owner or operator on that particular farm now, you know, so if you own a farm, if you a beginning farmer, especially if you don't, if you not own the farm, if you're not an operator or got a share on the farm, then you won't get no 156 now on that. But you got to be an owner, operator, producer on that farm to get that 156. So gotcha. um, that's just, again, when it comes to this particular program, most people are aware of that, you know, um, but now there are cases out there, you know, but uh, I will say if you're beginning from and you're looking at some land that you want to purchase, and if you don't have access to it just yet, now you, you won't be getting that. <laughs> uh, and that's for you. We, you know, you gotta be owner, operator, or producer to get that 156 on that farm. I got you. Yeah. Well, I don't see any more questions in our Q&A box or our chat box. So that means everybody is clear or scared, but I hope okay. nobody is scared. Um, okay. And I just want to thank you again, Neil, for taking time out of your schedule to talk to us about the ARC PLC program. For those of you that are still with us, I have dropped an evaluation link in the chat box. And I would ask that you please complete it and give us feedback because we do take this information and share it with one another to give us the opportunity to improve for our next webinar. Earlier, when I started this webinar, I mentioned that we will be doing this every Tuesday in the month of March. Next week's program, which will be March 15th, we'll be talking about Livestock Forage Disaster Program and our Non-Insured Crop Disaster Assistance Program. If anybody did not get a chance to hear this full presentation, hopefully by Wednesday of next week, this will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. Um, if there are not any other questions, I am going to close out tonight's webinar. I wanna thank you again, Neil, for hanging out with us. And I thank you as farmers and ranchers here in the state of Georgia for taking time out of your schedule to learn a little bit more about what FSA has to offer for you. Good night, everyone. See you next week.